Alright, this is the jig that I had built, the new one. I'm going to do a quick assembly. There's some that uh, viewers, that subscribers that have interest in it and seeing how it went together. There are a few mistakes on it that I made uh, in the drawing that I will correct on the drawing and if you are interested in that those corrected uh, drawing just let me know and I'll send it to you. They're not huge. <clears throat> the first mistake was I called this out as a three inch wide piece. It actually needs to be two and a half inch wide for the way that I have it uh, made because when I first drew when I first drew it I drew these as a half inch wide and later I changed them to three quarter inch wide and I forgot to take that extra quarter inch off of each side of this thing in the drawing and so yeah that needs to be two and a half inches and then the other mistake was these two holes here don't shouldn't be here I should have put them on this plate in this area so I'll just move those over and I'll correct the drawing like I said so what I'm going to do is assemble this thing so that people can see that are interested see how it goes together and what it's how it's intended to work <clears throat> and uh, I countersunk these with a half inch countersink countersunk them deep so I didn't have to get it really long these are just three quarter inch long these are one inch long countersunk ones and then a couple of half inch long ones alright so we're gonna go ahead and start I'm gonna take this this is the upper slide plate is what I call that that piece is gonna go under there then all of that is gonna go let's see that piece wants to go under there with this hole towards the back of it because that's going to be where your adjustment knob is going to go later on okay so you want that hole towards the back this has the threads in it I already did all the threading and everything already okay we're going to put the four one inch long quarter twenty countersunk ones in there there it is Now I'm going to, this is out of cold rolled steel, what I'm going to do is paint all this with a Cerakote H in a graphite black to keep uh, corrosion and stuff off of it because I'm using stainless steel on mild steel so you get a dissimilar metal corrosion and also when I do grinding I use uh, water as a coolant and I don't want this to get rusted up so I'm going to put that Cerakote on there later on but I'm just doing this now to do a quick show on how it works alright so this is what it looks like now we've kind of built basically a little dovetail or a slide track okay and there'll be some shimming and stuff with some real fine shim stock to compensate for the paint thickness later on so that you'll get a nice uh, slide and everything and I'll show that final build video or final assembly video when it's done alright now these are gonna go under there like this I think the lights better on this side these are gonna go under there like that so you've got your plate you got your center piece and then you got this little piece that are all bolted together and then you got these two slides that are not bolted to that put your little spacers on the top and then this is the base plate down there
I'm going to loosen these up just a hair so that it slides easy for the video. So you can get the idea of how it works. When I actually build it, this will be a little bit tighter and I'll put some like half thousandths or so brass shim stock in between there. Okay, let me get this out of the way. So now you can see how it's assembled. We've got this piece, this piece, and this piece are bolted together. And then these five pieces are bolted together. And it will do it'll give an action like that. Okay, so basically instead of paying uh, five hundred dollars for a dovetail, this setup so far has cost me uh about three hundred dollars. And that's just for the dovetail, that doesn't include any of the other work. And it slides real nice and is really pretty snug. Like I say, it's not tightened up yet, and I will do some final shimming and adjustments when I actually assemble it, but you can see the concept how it's going to work. What's going to happen is I will mount a post. What's happening is I'm going to mount a post on the bottom there. Have an adjustment angle that will come from the that will come up similar to this with a knob back here that will push on this. Okay, so it'll push that in towards the belt. Then what's going to happen on the top end is these are going to be what I called the uh, referred to in the drawing as the fixed angles. These are the ones that you want to make parallel with your platen face. So you get this square with your platen and this uh, parallel with your platen and this this side's perpendicular to your platen and then you'll put a st what I do is I put a straight edge across the platen and then these will slide up against that straight edge and then I can snug them down where I want them I actually want them to be back here myself I like a I like to keep them back farther in so into this opening area keep them back farther into this area so that the belt see the belt will stop out in here and won't be grinding away on the tool. <clears throat> Alright, then I've got a place, I've got this set up so I can use two bolts to uh, use a just got a long one and a short one in there to snug those up. Right now, obviously, we're just doing an assembly review of it so people can see how it goes together. And I kept the tolerances close on these because I don't want to have to battle with that with sloppy tolerances, which is <clears throat> one of the things that I noticed on my previous jig that I built out of scrap metal. And uh, I didn't care about the tolerances so much. I did some battling with those. I was able to overcome it, but uh, I decided that on this one, I'm going to keep the tolerances closer because I can. I am used a CNC machine to have this made for me. Okay, that's a little bit far, so I'm going to slide it back yet. There. Okay. So that's going to be the fixed angles. Those, uh, once they're set, with your platen, most probably you would never change those unless you actually removed your platen and did some adjustments to it that would cause it to be in a different plane than this, which might happen, but most most of the time it won't happen. This is my little shelf plate that I'm gonna that I use in here. And I use that for the my blank carrier to ride on. This is going to be the actual uh, just sliding angle. There we 
though. Okay, you see the idea here, this one will slide and the plate slides independently so that I can use, what I'll do then is I'll put the blank in here and clamp it up against these so that the blank is, this is before the blank has had any grinding done on it for the bevel and so I'll clamp it up against those which is parallel with the platen then I will have this in there to the distance that I want it so that um, the carrier can ride on it and then what I'll do is we'll just pretend that this Allen wrench is the blank I will close close this one up against it so that it's snug on the blank and then I'll tighten this down so then I've got this set this thickness is set on both sides to the width of the blank pre-bevel and then as I start to bevel it and the carrier, the carrier will be on there as well so this blank this distance here will be the car the blank and the carrier distance uh, whatever it is if I use a 3 16 and a quarter inch carrier would be a 3 16 blank plus a quarter inch carrier and I just smash that on put the carrier and the blank in there and just smash that on there clamp it down and then tighten these down and it will stay in that position and hold the hold it perfectly vertical so you get good even uniform grind lines and you can see it from the different angles this is how it'll slide the base will be fixed to the tool holder and it won't move and then the top will move its by turning the knob the top is going to turn the top piece will slide in like I said I've got about 300 in this so far when I get it finished I'll probably have three and a quarter maybe 350 in it because I'm gonna sandblast it and Cerakote it <clears throat> and then I'll weld I'll weld a, a, a mounting post on the bottom of it so I can mount it in my tool holder like that and then I've got to fabricate an angle that will come up under here and up like this and I'll have to purchase a little knob that I can so there's about another oh maybe maybe fifty dollars in it before it's done so about 350 I'll have a jig that is in my opinion of course since I built it and designed it it's going to be many times better than the ones that are available currently in the market for 500 or more it'll be good for hollow grinding and um, flat grinding I can go very wide I mean I can grind a very wide knife very very wide wider than a person really want to grind a knife I can grind with this this is how it looks like from the side when you slide this will slide along there and I had these holes here drilled to 730 seconds and what I was going to do is thread those and put a little uh, ball screw I don't know what you actually call the thing but it's got a ball bearing on the end of it and it looks like an, a little set screw with a ball bearing on it and I'll go in, use that to go in there and make any adjustments if there's slop in it but as I put it together it's so tight using this um, cold rolled steel that I'm not going to need those but I put them there just in case but 
the cold rolled steel is definitely, in my opinion, the way to go. This is stainless. This is stainless. This is stainless. I did the hardware. Bolts is stainless. I went stainless here because I had aluminum before and I wasn't pleased with the way the aluminum would kind of grab. It just wasn't hard enough uh, against the knife steel. So, yeah, that's the way it's going to look when it's all said and done. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.